You know, my philosophy is if it isn't broken, don't fix it. If it isn't broken, don't fix it. Like if you're happy with your outfit, go out, enjoy your day, feel confident, feel beautiful. However, if you're making an effort, you're trying to put an outfit together, you're working on it and you're like, something is off, something is off and it's not working and I don't know why. Like what is broken? What is wrong with my outfit? Stay tuned because I've got 10 things that you might be doing today that might be killing your outfit. Many of these are kind of subtle and things that you might not have thought of in the, in the past. So if you're new here, my name is Netta. I'm a personal stylist. I have cheered over 5,000 women on to fabulous, confident, every single day style through my Ageless Style program. And here on YouTube, I share about style over 40, over 50, over 60. So welcome if you're new here. I hope that by the end of this video, you will consider joining us in the Ageless Style community and um, by subscribing here and interacting in the comments. I always love hearing from you guys. Okay, so let's get started. We have some things to unpack here. Because often, you know, many of you share, I have, I have a couple of very active Facebook groups. One is the Netta Manly Style VIP Facebook group, and the other is Closet Confidence. This week, we have been doing the Closet Confidence workshop series. Definitely, if you still want to sign up for that, you can still, you still have a couple of days left to catch the replays. But one of the things that we've been doing in, in, in my groups is sharing outfits. And often, I see women share outfits that have stumped them. They're like, I don't know what Something isn't working about this. What is wrong with this outfit? Often, what is wrong with our outfits or our overall look comes down to a few things that we might not be taking into account. So I just wanna cover them here because these are easy tweaks to make. Again, if you're looking at your outfit in the mirror and you're like, that looks really cute, awesome, then you don't need to fix it. But if you do feel like something needs to be tweaked about your outfit, maybe it's one of the 10 things on today's list. Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about is a bad bag, a bad bag. There's so many sad, bad bags out there. Um, so what is a bad, what is my definition of a bad bag? So the first is a, a bag with, that's all function and no form. In other words, it's strictly utilitarian. It's clearly designed to hold a bunch of stuff, but there's no nod to style or no nod to, you know, it being an accessory that completes your outfits. Bags can add so much to an outfit, and if we're really holding something that's strictly utilitarian, it's really gonna drag down our looks. Second a way that the bag can be bad is it can be a faux logo bag. And by faux logo, I mean, there are a lot of brands you can find them at Walmart, you can find them at Target, you can find them at JCPenney, you can find them pretty much anywhere that slap logos all over their monogram bags, but it's not a Louis Vuitton monogram or a Gucci monogram, and, and whether you like Louis Vuitton and Gucci monograms or not, that's a personal style question, but they're, they, they are recognized as being monograms that are you know expensive and elegant and elevated. So. But a, but a random monogram, like C Wonder monogram bag from Walmart, or a random monogram bag from JCPenney, doesn't have that same look. So it's got the monogram without the elevation. And it really kind of looks like, it, it, they look cheap. And instead of doing a monogram, if you like, you know, if you want a designer looking bag, but you don't have the budget for a designer bag, which by the way, totally, totally get because they have gotten exorbitant. Like they're getting more and more and more expensive. Got a couple strategies for you. First, pick a luxurious, solid colored leather bag in a great neutral color for you. And again, the great neutral color for you, I talk about this all the time, is a color that's close to your hair color. So pick a solid neutral bag in a color that's close to your hair color, skip the monograms, skip the faux designer look, and just choose a beautiful timeless leather bag. The other way to get that look is to consider um, uh, like a, a resale. Like I really, really like um, the Real Real, Vestier Collective, Bad Borrower Steel, um, Second Time Around. I mean, there are just so many. What is, there's one, what goes around comes around. That's what I meant. Yeah, so there are a lot of places where you can buy designer bags if that's what you're looking for. Of course, your local consignment stores um, and you can buy them secondhand. Finally, about bad bags, because you can tell I feel very passionately about this. Um, bag, do not buy a mid-tier designer bag because you think it's a, just because it's a designer bag. Okay, if you really want a designer bag, then my encouragement would be to save up and get a secondhand version of a bag from a brand you really love, whether that's Gucci or Loewe or Louis Vuitton or whatever that is. 
that's totally optional. It's totally up to you. But if that's what your heart is asking for, you really want like a fancy, fancy bag, then get the fancy, fancy bag. Save up for that fancy, fancy bag. All the other mid-tier brands, Michael Kors, Coach, Kate Spade, Rebecca Minkoff, Kurt Geiger, only buy those bags if you're buying them because you love the bag. Like, I love Kate Spade bags. I'm not buying a Kate Spade bag because I'm like, ooh, Kate Spade is such a designer bag. I'm buying a Kate Spade bag because I like the style of it. Like, my Kate Spade Miss Piggy bag, I bought that because that spoke to my personal style. So, yes, they are nice bags, but don't buy them just because of the designer name because you can get great quality from a brand like Portland Leather that is going to be a lot more reasonable. And, you know, and the, the names like Kate Spade and Michael Kor and cores and even coach they they don't have the same um designer quality that that would necessitate you ba paying a lot of money for those bags so buy those bags just because you love them not because of the name and i would say that that's true about all bags even designer like if you want a gucci bag but it's an ugly gucci bag don't buy it just because it's gucci it's all really, really comes down to what is important to me, like how do I wanna spend my money, and how can I find a bag whether I'm, I'm paying $30 for it, $300 for it, or $3,000 for it. How can I buy, find a bag that really speaks to my personal style, I'm not just buying it for the label, no matter what your budget is. Okay, that was a long way of saying that, but that is what I meant, like really pick a bag that speaks to you, and, and skip the bad bags. Finally, a second second thing that you might be doing wrong that might be killing your style is bad shoes. Now, I talked about this in my Inez video, but it's really important to, to start with style and then find a version that's comfortable, not the other way around, not the other way around. If the only thing that someone says when they look at your shoes is, oh, those look like comfortable shoes, like, no, no. You want them to be cute shoes that are also comfortable. Comfort is not an option. None of us want to hobble around. And so I really lean into brands that are comfortable and stylish. It's one of the reasons I love Inez. I will put the, the um, little clip up of my, um, my favorite Sophia sandals from Inez. I love, love, love these sandals. They are really, truly comfortable and a great event and, and dressing up shoe to own. Um, that said, I didn't pick them just because they were comfortable. I picked them because they were beautiful and then I knew you know, like a metallic sandal is a, is a go-to for me, and I picked them because they were beautiful, and then they happen to be a comfort brand. So you want to find shoes that speak your, your love language, that are beautiful, and then you want to find a brand that fits you well and is comfortable for you. So I'm going to have some recommendations in the description box below, but if you're looking for a replacement to the comfort sandals that are being sold to all women over 40, over 50, over 60, like the Mephistos and the Clarks and, and some of these. And I did do a whole video on comfort shoes and I identified some chic, comfortable sandals. But you want to go style first and then comfort. Some of the styles that are currently trending that are also really comfortable are Birkenstocks, the slide sandals, um, and the new fisherman style sandals, which are, are I think are slowly kind of going to be replacing Birkenstocks. They are very, very comfortable. There's a version from every comfort brand pretty much that will check these boxes, but you want to find a shoe that you love and then make sure it's comfortable. Okay, I said that like nine different times, but I feel very strongly about it. Next is, next thing that you might be doing that's killing your style is the stretch and sweat rut. So stretch clothes, sweat clothes, workout clothes, athleisure clothes, wearing them as they are. Like wearing a full head to toe sweatsuit, like fleece head to toe, wearing a head to toe athleisure outfit without turning the athleisure pieces into an outfit. Um, you don't want to run around all day, every day in just your workout clothes or just a sweatsuit. Instead, you want to take those pieces, which could be really practical and maybe even essential for your lifestyle, and you want to take those pieces and you want to transform them into an outfit. For example, an athleisure look can be just like, oh, this is you know leggings and a top that I wear to work out, or you can throw on a jacket, you can throw on a cute little baseball cap, and you can add cute sneakers and a cute crossbody, and it becomes an outfit. So just wearing your, your sweat clothes or your workout clothes as is is not enough and you can really feel like undressed or almost like it's an extension of your PJs and that's just never going to make us feel cute. The next thing you might be doing that's, that might be killing your style is wearing no makeup at all. 
wearing no makeup at all. I've talked about this in the past, but you want to establish what your minimum viable beauty look is. Like what is the bare, the, the bare minimum makeup look that you feel comfortable in that you, you know, if you're running errands, if you're out and about, if you're if you're wearing this makeup look and you run into people, you're going to feel, okay, I, I, I'm not dressed up. It's, this is not full on glam makeup, but this is a great everyday minimum makeup look for me. That's gonna be different for every single woman. But I really believe that a little bit of color and a little bit of smoothness and evenness and all of that on our skin as we get older really adds a lot to how we look and feel. I don't even answer the phone without lipstick on. Like I feel like it makes such a difference in how I feel and how I look. And if I walk by the mirror in my house and I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like uh, my hair is crazy and my skin looks crazy and like all of the things, I don't feel cute and I don't feel productive and I don't feel positive. And so adding a little lipstick, adding a little color to your cheeks, filling in your brows, adding a little mascara, whatever that takes for you to feel cute Commit to hitting that level every single day. No makeup at all can honestly often look like we are like undone or unpolished. And sometimes it just takes just a little bit to give us that, that extra edge and make us feel cute again. Okay. Next thing that you might be doing to be killing, that might be killing your style is wearing too much statement jewelry. Statement jewelry is definitely making a comeback, but like everything else that makes a comeback, it looks different and you know the pieces are really edgy and cool and chunky and different. And some of the pieces that we all wore, maybe the collar necklaces or the dangly earrings that that, you know, and, and especially the, the jewelry sets that many of us wore years ago really look clunky and busy and dated right now. They just don't look modern. And so you can put on a perfect outfit or you can put on a really cute and, and chic outfit and feel really good in your clothes and then you add like a really crazy statement necklace and earrings and then maybe you've got multiple rings on your finger but they're not on your on your hands but they're not layering rings and maybe the rings are dated and maybe the bracelets are dated and then you've just got too much going on and it's not a modern look it, it kind of kills the elegance of the look and it also kills the freshness and the modernity of the look so um you want to look at what is trending in jewelry jewelry trends it's so easy to like go on vogue.com now and see all the runway shows or to go on a site like Revolve or a site like Netta Porter or you know one of those those more elevated sites and look at the way that they're that they're styling jewelry on their models and also look at the jewelry pieces that are being offered and you're going to get a it only takes 10 15 minutes you're going to get an easy like kind of snapshot in your mind of what looks modern in jewelry right now okay next I talk about this all the time clothes that don't fit clothes that don't fit well if your clothes do not fit you well then you are going to not feel as cute in your clothes. So you can have the most beautiful outfit and it doesn't fit you well, it's not gonna look beautiful. And that's so hard for us to accept because most of us don't enjoy taking our clothes to get altered. I'm petite, I feel you. Like I've had so many things altered in my life and yes, it would be easier to not alter them. But I know the difference between a great fit and not a great fit on my body and I choose the great fit because I wanna look and feel cute in my clothes. So one of the culprits of a fit is wearing clothes that are too tight. If you've got like a lot of um, stretching, you know, where you can see that that your pants are stretched and tight across the upper thigh or crotch area, if your um, shirts don't lay flat in the front because you're stretched over your bust, if your sleeves look like they are like just way too tightly gripped on your arms, like all of those things are signs that, that the fit of the item is off and that it's too tight. Now, the other extreme, of course, is something that is so baggy and maybe you still, you've lost 10 or 15 pounds and you still see yourself as a former size and your mind hasn't caught up with your wardrobe or your wardrobe hasn't caught up with your mind. Um, and maybe you, you'd like oversized things because you feel like they're more flattering and maybe you feel like you've got things to hide. Maybe you've got a bum or a belly or a bust and you want to downplay it and you think that oversized clothes are the way to do that. They are not. The most Flattering clothes for every woman, every body shape, every single time is something that is tailored to your body. In other words, it skims your body, it's not tight, and it doesn't swallow you up. So the right fit is critical. Next, I've talked about this so many times, I've done so many videos about this, and I'll link some of them below, but a splashy print. 
If you're gonna wear a big, bold print, it needs to be an elevated print from a brand that knows what they're doing when, when they do prints. A brand like, I, and I, you know, I do not work for Farm Rio, I do not own any stock in the company, but it's a brand that does splashy prints really well. And there are brands that are just known for those really interesting, iconic statement making prints. But buying a statement print from a brand that is an over 50 brand or is a little bit more of a classic brand and doesn't have that same contemporary flair is, is, a, is a shortcut to not looking and feeling cute in your outfits. So splashy prints from the wrong brands, avoid those. If you're going to go for a big, bold print, make sure it's from a brand that is known for iconic signature prints. Okay, next, over the top nails over the top nails. I feel like we want to, you know, doing something on your nails, and I'm saying this is, not, I have nothing, I'm between manicures right now, but not having anything on your nails can be the equivalent of not having any makeup on. We can feel kind of unfinished. I know I do. I really prefer to have the red on my nails when my nails are red. Every time I look down, I feel like, I feel more elegant, I feel more polished, no pun intended, and I feel like I've got my life together because my nails look nice. So if you feel that way, chances are you maybe are you know, a regular manicure getter. And if you regularly get manicures, my encouragement for you would be to make the manicures elegant and classic and, and avoid overly long claw-like acrylic nails. When you've got really, really long, really bright, really flashy nails, they can really look like claws and they can highlight aging hands in an unattractive way. Like I, I think it's important to highlight your hands in a way that makes you look your hands look and feel beautiful and claw-like nails are just not gonna do it. So my encouragement would be to pick a color that's really flattering to your skin tone or to go for a really, uh, the kind of the, the white that we would put on our nails for a French manicure but without the tips. That's a clean, elegant, everyday look. I'm gonna put my favorite two color combination um, up here. If you want just a clean, elegant, almost no, no nail polish, look for your nails but better it's like like when you put on the tinted moisturizer and you can't tell you're wearing anything but it just looks better that's what this manicure will do for you or you can choose a color like I do I, I when I you know have my nails done which is most of the time they are red and that's that's the color that I choose for my nails but because they're red they're short so if you're gonna do a bold color a shorter nail is gonna look more modern and a bold color and I think a short to medium length nail is just a better bet for all of us um, most of the time. I really do. Okay, then the ninth thing that you might be doing that might be bringing your style down is wearing dated silhouettes. What do I mean by dated silhouettes? Silhouettes have dramatically changed in the last five or ten years. We went from long tops, low-rise pants that were skinny, um, and then booties, to um, you know a flare or wide leg or baggy style pants a shorter top that hits at the waist and a higher waisted pant or higher rise pant. So if you're still wearing the same styles and the same silhouettes you wore years ago, those are gonna look dated. There are, I mean, and with very few exceptions, there are very, very few actual classics. Um, one of the classics might actually be a, a pair of straight dark wash jeans that have nothing going on. If you have a pair that you've had in your closet like that for a few years, those might pass. The classic test but for the most part if you've got if you're wearing a lot of the silhouettes that you wore years ago the same little fitted jackets with the ruched sleeves the same um you know tunic tops with skinny pants the same tunics with leggings the same accessories like all of those pieces from several years ago look very dated now and so again can really be helpful to just spend a little bit of time looking on your favorite department store's website at the contemporary section and kind of seeing what outfits look like now if you just haven't been shopping in a while like life is taking over you just haven't shopped you don't really know what's what's in stores right now just take a look um, at, at the way that silhouettes have changed over the last few years if you've been buried under a job or a baby or 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 caring for an aging parent or other obligations, it's very easy to wake up and be like, wait, everybody's dressing different. Everybody's dressing different. What happened? What happened? It happens to all of us. It happens to the best of us. It's nothing like, it's, it's you know, it's not a judgment. It's just 
look at what's going on out there now that you're ready to dive back in and choose more updated silhouettes. You're gonna feel cuter in them, I promise. Finally, the last thing I wanna talk about is poor quality. Poor quality is one of the main things that's gonna drag your outfits down. And poor quality is not necessarily a reflection on price. Yes, if you spend more, you are more likely to get better quality, but I have some great quality pieces from Target and I have some great quality pieces from high-end department stores. And I've also bought things at higher-end stores that are not great quality. There was a recent um, a post that I saw about Emily Ratatowski, whatever her name is, um, wearing, you know, I think she calls herself Amrata now, um, wearing a Dolce & Gabbana dress on a red carpet that had a horrible seam down the front of the dress. It was like there's no excuse for a designer gown that's designed to be worn by a celebrity on the red carpet to have a seam like that. So it's not just inexpensive clothes that can sometimes be poor quality. So you, you want to pay attention to quality regardless of price, whether you're shopping on a budget or whether you have all the money in the world to spend on your wardrobe, look for the best quality at a price that you can afford. And so poor quality is gonna almost always equal like fabrics that are shiny when they're not supposed to be shiny fabrics that pull and stretch in the wrong places and just all of those all of those you know the seams not lining up well the pattern not not lining up well on the side um and the buttons being poor quality the buttons dangling off or not being sewn on properly so they flop forward like this there's so many signs of good quality versus bad quality in clothes i did a whole video about this so i'll link that video but you want to buy the best quality you can afford and then make whatever tweaks you need to make if you're if you're shopping on a budget to elevate your clothes often that can be a simple switch of buttons um it can be um adjusting the fit so that it looks couture and looks like it fits you beautifully. There's so many ways to do this regardless of your price point. So I hope that you found this helpful. These are 10 things you might be doing that are slowly, quietly, secretly killing your style and how you can fix them. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe so we can keep hanging out. And like I said at the beginning of this video, it's not too late to to hop into Closet Confidence and catch up on the replays. I would love to have you in there. Um, comment below, let me know which of these things you may be struggling with. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Always love chatting with you there. Love you guys, I'll see you in the next one.